Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome again, wonderful listener or watcher. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in to these N- NCC Unplugged episodes. Uh, today, we're going to unpack a little bit about where we're going with our sermon series in December. And I asked Garrett to join me because uh, Garrett's actually going to be teaching two out of the five topics. Uh, So leading up to Christmas, uh, our series is going to be called Unwrapping Peace. Uh, A look at peace and and the way this word is used and the concept of peace is seen uh, throughout the, the, especially these these characters that, and they're not just characters like it's a made up story, but they're they're characters within, um, within scripture, real historical people that had the promise of peace through Jesus. Uh, some accepted that peace, some didn't accept that peace. And so we'll unpack uh, throughout the weeks of of some of those different different people. Um, so Garrett, I have a quiz question to start us off with. Okay. I, I did not. I didn't yeah, need, you didn't ask me. No. Give me a quiz. So every, every New Testament epistle, so the letters that are written to churches in the New Testament, mm-hmm. either start or end with a with the concept of peace. So they'll mm-hmm. say, peace be with you, or send my peace to so-and-so, except for two. Mm. Two epistles do not have peace either at the beginning or the end. Galatians is one of them. It is not. Really? You came out real strong on Man, that, Man, I though. thought, because Galatians, the way I always teach it, Galatians is written like with a caps lock. Like he's mm. he doesn't have a greeting. So right. I just assumed it wouldn't have a It peace. must come at the end. We can look that okay. up. Matt, yeah. Matt can look Maybe that up while we're doing this. <laughs> Um, Did fact check me on this, but this is this is uh, gosh, one of my commentaries came up with. So it doesn't have a mention of peace at the beginning or the right. End. No greeting of peace at the at the beginning. No no greeting of peace at the end. Wow, I'm surprised it's not Galatians. Um, so then maybe one of the general epistles, like maybe James. James is correct. James is one of them. Okay, so then my other guess would be Second Peter. Ooh, it. It's not Second Peter. It it is an epistle that has multiple uh, letters written. Okay, so, but not Peter. Hmm. Third John. First John. First John. Okay, First John. I would have guessed First John would yeah. have had something with peace. So James and First John. There we go. So, so Galatians does have it at the end. At the really. Oh. Galatians 1.3 says, huh. grace and peace be with you. So See, there's something about Galatians that typically, like, it's associated as him writing it angrily. I think Matt just needs to start teaching your classes. <laughs> <for me>. No. <laughs> um, so, okay, so there that established, one, it establishes peace is a large concept for mm. uh, the writers of Scripture, those that interacted with Jesus. So, Garrett, when you hear this word peace... Um, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament, what are what are you thinking? What are you hearing in that word peace? Well, my mind first goes back to the Hebrew word for peace, and that's shalom. Mm-hmm. And in the Hebrew, it's it's pretty clearly identified as wholeness, or um, probably like the the best way to translate it in English would be tranquility. Um, mm-hmm. Just like a uh, everything set as it need it's supposed to be set. So there's no divisiveness. There's no tension mm-hmm. to a, to that degree. Um, and so that's my first thought when I think of yeah. peace. I think of shalom. I think of wholeness. Yeah. yeah, and and going along with that, that became a very familiar greeting for them. Yeah, right. And one example of that. Uh, so this is. Uh, Luke 24, 36, it says, as they're saying these things, Jesus himself stood in their midst. He said to them, peace to you. Mm -hmm. Shalom. Hey, what's up? Yeah. And it's still, you know, a a widely used greeting, even in, like, in Jewish circles. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just a, it's not just a Christian greeting. It became a Christian greeting because it was a Jewish greeting. There's this association of, through the Mosaic law, when we obey the Mosaic law, we have wholeness with God. The relationship that we severed through the Mosaic Law, we can come back into and find that wholeness. And then when I think of it in New Testament context, Paul clearly outlines that 
no, we can't. Like, mm. you can obey the law, but the law is not there for you to find that wholeness. It's to show you how far from that wholeness you always yeah. are. So then our wholeness comes through? Christ, yeah. yeah. And I think that takes me to my my understanding of peace beyond just the Hebrew comes from the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. Mm. And so I think the the worst way to teach the fruit of the Spirit is to teach it as these are things that we try to attain on our own. Yeah. That it's, we live a life to try to produce these in ourself. So that's one bad thing to take away from the fruit of the Spirit. The other one is that each of these attributes are their own fruit, that mm. there's a fruit of peace and there's a fruit of joy and there's a fruit of goodness. Um, the word in Greek, the, it's, it's the word karpon is the actual word in the manuscript and it's singular for fruit. Um, so it's saying that the fruit of the Spirit, meaning the attribute of God mm -hmm. that is at work in you is a culmination of all these other things. And peace is one of them. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of wholeness. And when you have this wholeness, there's love and there's patience and there's kindness and there's That's goodness. True. And it's all part of this yeah. one um, fruit. And so peace is a quality of what it means to be representing God, that we mm -hmm. have a wholeness, that we're, we're returning to what God created us to be cool. because of the Spirit's work in our life. Yeah, yeah, really cool. And that then because they understood that as Christ bringing that wholeness became part of the gospel mm -hmm. because it's what Jesus brings, but it's also what you become in Christ. Um, I have another verse here, Acts 10, uh, 36. He says, He sent the message to the Israelites proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. Um so that it it actually almost came to sum up the gospel that Jesus that the good news of peace through Jesus Christ um, that peace still meant that wholeness but because that wholeness never came through the law and can't it now comes through Jesus yeah. so we have this huge proclamation that first Easter the Easter that first Christmas uh, of Peace coming. Mm -hmm. Peace like there's never been peace mm -hmm. before. Um, so one person uh, we're going to look at in the proclamation are the angels that are bringing this news to the shepherds. And what's interesting, they're the ones that bring the news. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about the role of angels, they're, they're just messengers. Mm -hmm. There's different, not to get into detail, but there's different levels of divine beings Anytime you see angels, it's a reference to someone who's a messenger from God. And so they're messengers of saying, the person who has just come to the world brings the peace. Yeah. But in reality, it, so we could think of this as the first gospel, but it's really the second gospel. The first mm -hmm. gospel comes in Genesis 3.15, called the Proto-Evangelium, and it's the offspring of the woman will crush the serpent of the snake and the snake the the, the crush the crush head the of head the head serpent is. and the serpent will strike his heel that's the first proclamation and mm -hmm. so there's this understanding in the fall of humanity and Adam and Eve that there's no longer wholeness mm -hmm. it's a break from this communion between God and man mm -hmm. and in the work of the offspring of the woman meaning Jesus the serpent's head's going to get crushed and then when you tie that to the proclamation that these messengers from God are giving they're saying the serpent's head is about to get crushed and there's going to yeah. be wholeness again. Yeah. That's yeah. the proclamation. Yeah, and we're going to open up the book of Revelation a little bit and we'll see some, uh, maybe what it looked like behind the scenes for these this mm. movement of Jesus to earth. Yeah. Uh, because we have our view of it, which is as humans here on earth, uh, but what would have been like in the angelic realm for this movement to happen? Mm. And we don't get too much of it from Scripture, but... Uh, we'll start off our series with that, and then, um, of course, those that are hearing this from the angels are the shepherds, and yeah. we have that scene at Christmas, the shepherds out in the field watching their flocks at night, um, and they are just, I, I, don't, I don't know what their initial reaction would have been to, to these, um, you like to point out, you know, these angels are not these 
uh, chubby cherubim no. that are coming out of heaven yeah. and the shepherds going, oh, look at that's really cool. Well, look up in the sky. I mean, they would have been... So most likely <clears throat> the distinction of heavenly beings are... In the Greek, it's the word angelos. So where we get the word angels, mm -hmm. angelos, which just means messenger. It's used to talk about like her, the god Hermes and mm -hmm. the Greek pantheon, the one with the wings that flew around yeah, and like yeah. gave messengers for the god. Wings on his shoes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that that's used in that way. In the Hebrew, it's the word um, melacha, and it, it's the same thing for messenger. But then in the, other, in the Hebrew, there's also two other distinctions for heavenly beings which is keruv, where we get the word cherubim from, hmm. and serif, which is where we get seraphim from. That, those are the plurals. And the cherubim were, would have been the guardians of God's glory, hmm. and the seraphim would have been the worshipers who give God glory. And the uh, melacha, the angels, are the ones that give messages, okay. or that send messages to God's creation. Mm -hmm. And so they all are working together in this scene where a message is given to the shepherds that peace is about to come, mm -hmm. and the heavenly hosts come together, which is the culmination of all these different distinctions of heavenly beings, mm -hmm. glorifying the message that's being proclaimed, yeah. that peace is about to be yeah. returned to God's yeah. creation. Yeah. It's a beautiful picture. And then uh, the week after that, we'll talk about Herod, who's our first look at someone that uh, didn't cho choose peace. Um, you know, Herod's um, looking to kill the babies because he wants to keep him himself on the throne and not this rumor of a Messiah being mm. born. And so he has some interaction with uh, the, the, the Magi. Uh, he's got interaction with others. And there's, there's two words I picked up on as you read Herod's story, one is disturbed and the other is furious. Mm. And I, I just love that picture of, well, I don't love it. Uh, I mean, here's, Something we can resonate right, with. Right, here's a message of peace. Mm -hmm. And then you have this other person that's disturbed and furious who needs this peace, mm. but they're allowing themselves to control. Even though it's disturbed, he wants his disturbed and furious nature because it keeps him on the throne. And I, I we just I just finished recording the videos for the characters of Christmas study yeah. that we're doing. Yep. And what I was doing a little bit of extra study on Herod as well. And when you think of Herod, you think of the tyrant, the one that kills all the babies. Mm -hmm. and, but for the first twenty four years, are you of saying Herod's he's reign, a good guy? No, I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying for the first twenty four years, he did more for the Jews in Israel than any other king. Wow. For, like he rebuilt the temple, he got commerce going. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, uh, like poverty was, the the Jewish people were in a lot of poverty. He mm -hmm. brought them out of that. Got um, trade started wow. again. But then in the last nine years, that's what he's remembered for because all he was concerned about was holding on to his mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. and he became so worried about that that he couldn't have peace because yeah. he wanted to cling to what he had, what he had yeah. built, and what his reputation was. Mm -hmm. And that's always remembered for is yeah. the guy who clung to his power, not yeah. the guy who found peace. Cool. So definitely looking forward to that sermon. And then we're also going to talk about Mary and Joseph. I mean, here's two teenagers practically that um, are given this news that, I mean, any family even today, just there's a lot of fallout from, mm -hmm. you know, Mary's pregnant, what happened, what's going on, we're not married yet. And then you add in some of the cultural uh, understanding of that day, and it could have, if if they were not faithful to the calling that God had placed on mm -hmm. their life, if Joseph was not humble in those moments, if Mary was not willing, it could have easily led to uh, chaos and just not peace. Yeah, and you can even read between the lines a little bit. They're returning to their hometown mm. in a time of a census where all of their family is returning yep. to the same hometown, yep. and she's pregnant, nine months pregnant. Yep. And they, you know, don't make room for her somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They put her in the, um, in the stable. And there's different scholarly views on what that stable was, right. Right. Um, and how you know it. It's pretty clear to me in scripture that that Luke is identifying. Listen, Jesus was born in a horse trough. Mm -hmm. This wasn't grandiose. Mm -hmm. There, um, there was a level of 
we don't want to be seen <laughs> mm-hmm. like Mary and Joseph. We're not going to have you give yeah. birth to your kid with the rest yeah. of the, you know, everything yeah. going on. So they could have easily said, I'm not going to have peace, but they, they didn't let that right. deter them. Right. And they chose to define their peace by the way God yeah. defined it. I mean, their peace would have been maybe getting rid of the problem, which some people choose mm-hmm. to do today, right? Is, well, my life is going to be chaotic if I have this child. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to get rid of this child so I can have peace, mm-hmm. where we would say, no, 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 peace is following God. Yeah. And in this story, God was clear with different visions and revelations to them in a specific way, maybe. But if we're willing to be faithful to God, even when it goes against our conventional mm-hmm. wisdom, um, we we can have that that wholeness. And you see a huge difference in the mindset of Herod and Mary, where Herod is identifying his identity by what he clings to with his power. Mm-hmm. You know, his whole last nine years... He's seen as a tyrant because he does whatever he can to pursue that, hold on to that power. Mary, when she's introduced with Gabriel, her response to this unbelievable message um, that is really, it's going to uproot her entire life. Yeah. yeah. Her response is, I'm God's servant. Mm-hmm. Um, and that word do loss, it can easily be translated as slave, mm-hmm. um, not slavery as we think of it, but as an indentured service, that Mm -hmm. you realize that you can't pay off a debt on your own, so you give yourself to someone else in order to pay off the debt. And so what she's saying is, God has given me so much that I can't repay, I'll do anything he asks of me because I'm his due loss. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely difference of of self-identifying between Herod and, and Mary. Good point. And one has peace and the other doesn't. Yeah. And then for our Christmas Eve services, uh, we're going to talk about the Prince of Peace mm. and, and Jesus himself and Jesus' accomplishment of all of those promises. So everybody was told they were going to have peace and how Jesus brought that. Mm. Um, and it kind of gets back to how we started things. There, there's a piece of wholeness that Jesus brings. Um, part of that is inner peace. Um, Philippians 4 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your quest to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Um, it's that type of inner peace that Herod never saw. Yeah, uh, He had the opportunity to, to find it through Jesus, but chose not to. Um, relational peace that in, in Jesus, uh, Jesus calls us to be peacemakers, and we can have relational peace with others when we're faithful to God. And... Um, that's the peace that some people did find. You know, Mary and Joseph did find that. They had relational peace, peace with others uh, because of Jesus. Um, Romans 12, I love this verse because it, well, let me read the verse and then I'll, I'll say why. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everybody. It It's a self-acknowledging verse that says, look, it, it may not be possible mm-hmm. to live at peace with, but if at, pos- if at all possible, during during the times you can, live at peace with others. So it's that um, it's it's that re- request, that command to live at peace with others because of the peace we have with our, our ourselves. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's also the ult- eternal peace mm-hmm. that um, our wholeness with God is a wholeness here and now, absolutely. But it's also a wholeness with God for eternity yeah. um, because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. He had to be born in the first place, which is what we celebrate at Christmas lived a perfect life, died on a cross, was resurrected after three days. Because of all of that, we have that eternal promise of peace. Yeah. I um, think we have to identify the difference between, like in Christian living, it's easy for us to say, well, I don't have peace right now. I'm all, There's always mm-hmm. something I'm not at peace. But we have to recognize there's a difference between the brokenness we had between us and God before we came to know Christ versus in knowing Christ, the tension we have mm-hmm. between living with him and for his kingdom yeah. versus living, yeah. you know, amidst a, the world that's, you know, still broken. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a difference between the tension and brokenness. Yeah, and even in the brokenness, because of the peace, there's no lost opportunity in bringing peace to brokenness because of eternity, mm. 
Meaning like if, if we are those peacemakers, whether it's peace between relationships or peace between a, a doctor healing something that's wrong in someone, when that's brought to peace, it lends itself into eternity because it's it's ultimately God's doing yeah. and bringing that peace. And so like if it's, it's, it's that concept of bringing heaven to earth, it's not it's not going to fully be a, able to be accomplished. But every time we try to bring a piece of heaven to earth, it's not lost. Mm. Even even if there's still hurt and brokenness mm. in it, uh, we 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 in our trying to accomplish peace are accomplishing what God is doing through Jesus and continues to do through Jesus through us. So it's mm. it's through Jesus. It's through us. And so it has a, it has the opportunity to to influence eternity, and so it's never it's never lost if yeah. that makes sense. It's what it means for us to be ambassadors. Yeah, and we're yeah. we're bringing the peace of the kingdom to the brokenness of the world, mm-hmm. but we're still living in the brokenness of the world. Right. So it's still not going to be perfect peace right. when we bring right. it. Right, yeah. right. It's not a promise of everything's going to be all right. We're all going to make a million bucks and be okay yeah. with everything. Um, but that's, that's part of being a Christian and the brokenness of the world. So, well, Garrett, I really appreciate you being here for this kind of preview yeah, to our peace series. Um, you know, it is a time of the year when there's people that have lost loved ones uh, throughout the year. It's a time when they see everybody else getting together with family members and they don't have anybody to get with. So maybe just a, a reminder during this time of year to be that peace for someone else, yeah. to extend that peace to someone else to be that encouragement and love um, that maybe you've you've gone through similar times and so you know how it might feel. But I uh, really, really hope that you're able to join us for uh, these the sermon series throughout December. Um, and just kind of as an update, we have five Christmas Eve services uh, this year, and so really hope you can join us both on December 23rd and December 24th. What did you call December 23rd earlier? So December 23rd is officially called Christmas Adam <laughs> because Adam comes before Eve. Uh, I've never heard it said that. Yeah, Adam was created before so Eve. Funny. So the day before Christmas Eve, it makes sense to be called Christmas Adam. So glad it's officially in your calendar now. So Christmas Adam, December 23rd, we have two services, at one at 5, one at 7, uh, the neat thing about the five o'clock s- service is it's going to be geared really for families. So we're not going to have like a worship band on stage, but rather we're going to be doing worship to some music videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have some different uh, elements. One I'm already thinking about for the kids. We're going to, I'm going to create a competition between two of them and they're going to run out of the room and do something as fast as possible, run <laughs> back in. And it'll be kind of going along with the lesson of peace. Um, and then uh, we, we have three identical services on Christmas Eve, uh, December 20, 24th. Uh, we have three, five, and seven. So really hope you're able to make that. And of course, uh, we'll be live streaming some of those as well. So uh, connect with us throughout the month of December, uh, either on our Thursday night service at seven o'clock or our Sunday services at 845 and 1030. We'd love to see you there and for you to unwrap a little bit of peace. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services, Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m., and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.